I'd like to welcome you to the Thought for the Day on Tuesday. It's good to be together. You know, it's, uh, I don't know if you've noticed <laughs> on Sunday that every Sunday we have a theme. And, uh, and it, it was interesting because last Sunday our theme was the sunrise, S-O-N, the resurrection story. So here it is coming on Thanksgiving and Christmas. And the theme is uh, Easter. But really every Sunday is about the resurrection. Every day is about the sun coming up, rising, giving us a purpose and hope. And I guess that theme will never grow old. It's that message that kind of holds us together. I always like to read Ecclesiastes, but I read a little further in Ecclesiastes, not just the usual verses, and I went to Ecclesiastes 3, verse 11. And... Uh, because they were after church, a couple of the guys go, well, Don, what's the theme for next Sunday? And I said, I barely got through this Sunday, but then I just said precious. And that's, I said, yeah, the word precious, that's going to be the theme for Sunday. Here's what it says in Ecclesiastes 3, verse 11. God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. That's precious. Our heart, the human heart, that our heart has the capacity to touch what is eternal. The gift of love, message of grace, that's eternal. And that message is inside the heart of each one of us. And I know sometimes my heart gets hardened. You know, I get self-centered or angry or possessed by something and I lose touch with what's eternal but when the sun rises <laughs> that precious message I realize that our heart has the capacity to touch what is bigger than all of us like yesterday uh, one of our members Don comes by and and then Don is a, just a good guy. He comes by every couple, maybe two or three weeks to drop off his donation. And I said, would you like a cup of coffee? And he said, nothing better than a Lutheran cup of coffee before going back to work. And so we sit down and we talk. And he's asking me, he said, Don, how is the church doing? I mean, really, honestly, financially, are we solid? Are we going to be okay? And I said, Don, we're going to be okay because of people like you. You know, just your support and your goodness and just stopping by. That's what gets us through. And I said, remember, Don, uh, I remember when your youngest daughter, that's when I first met you. And I'm not sure whether it was you or your wife or who, and they said, is it possible for our daughter to receive First Communion at your church? And you were not members at that time. And your daughter was 10 years old. And I said, of course. And I remember that service of First Communion, and, and now your daughter, what, she's over 40, right? So it's been over 30 years since you graced us and we had a chance to have First Communion. I said, it was interesting because this past Sunday we had First Communion, and it was different, because I remember a lot of times First Communion is a, it always is a cause for celebration, but there's a party and there's gifts, and the church is crowded, and this past Sunday First Communion was pretty basic. I mean, the kids had to wear a facial covering. And we couldn't go elbow to elbow around the altar, so they came up one at a time. And I, there was a cracker for them and a, a small glass of wine or juice. And they took it, and then they went back to their seats. And it was just an intimate crowd of family. And yet over those 30 years, it's still as precious as it could be. In fact, in some ways, maybe a little more precious because the focus was not on the party or the celebration. The focus was on what that bread and wine really means for these kids. So, Don, it's people like you and your family are precious. And, of course, I, I, I'm hoping this Sunday we're going to sing the song Precious Lord. Uh, we sing it a lot. And whenever I think of the song Precious Lord, I think of my buddy Calvin. And, I, you know, every once in a while something happens where you miss somebody that has been gone for a while. And Calvin was a beautiful African-American man, and his wife still comes. And I remember watching his son play football at Sandburg, and I did his daughter's wedding not too long ago. But he would come in here and sit right over there, 
And he would say, hey, hey, we sing in Precious Lord today. And every once in a while we did. And whenever Mike knew Calvin was there, oh my gosh, did he crank up Precious Lord. And Calvin couldn't sing worth a wit. But boy, when, <laughs> when we played Precious Lord, he would be there moving and shaking and smiling. And he just kind of lit up the congregation. And that was precious. And I realized how precious every single person and every single moment is. Over the past nine months, you know, I, I'm scared like you are, nervous like you are, worried like you are. But I've also discovered too, like I'm sure you have, that every moment that we share is precious. Every moment of goodness and grace that comes across our path, it's important for our heart to kind of be in touch with what is divine and spiritual. And uh, every morning when I walk in my office, you know, I, I see little Jackson's picture, and he died when he was 17 months. I see Jack Mitchell's picture, and he was only 17 years old. And I'm reminded of the precious moments that have gone before and the precious moments yet to come. Every, that's why I love these little chats during the week because it reminds me of how precious it is that we can connect, that our humble temple is here and that your heart is there. And we use our heart to keep in touch with the divine so that grace and unconditional love continue to come alive. It gives me hope. Glad to be with you and let's share another precious moment tomorrow on Wednesday. God bless. Thanks for listening.